Well, here we are. We finally reached the five year anniversary of Airtime Thrills and it's been quite a ride. My first ever video was released on April 7th, 2018 and it was basically an autobiography for who I am. How I became an enthusiast back in 2000 when I was just 12 years old. How I fell out of the coaster world for over 10 years and how I got back into it. I started traveling again to ride coasters in 2015, starting to take trips every summer. I got onto Instagram in 2017, and by 2018, I wanted a platform to do rankings. So I started looking into a YouTube channel, knowing nothing about it. Early in 2017, me and my brother planned an epic cross-country road trip for 2018, where my goal was to ride all the best coasters in the country, and I was going to launch the channel when I got back. I decided to launch it a few months early to make some pre-trip videos, so that's what I did. I really drew my inspiration from Canada Coaster Fan. He had a very low budget channel with just a microphone and what looked like PowerPoint, but I loved his content because of his ideas. I wanted to be a channel just like that. So I got a cheap microphone, something to capture my screen, something to record my voice, and I prepped a PowerPoint presentation for my first video. I had no way of editing my audio, so I had to record the 10 minutes perfectly or else I had to start over. That pretty much brings you up to speed to where I left you on the first video. So now I wanna take you on a behind the scenes tour on the five years since. I did that painstaking PowerPoint method for my first five videos, and then I went to Cedar Point for the grand opening of Steel Vengeance. When I got back to do my review, I got my first official editor, Corel Visual Studio. This is a very basic editor, but I got the job done. My videos were still bad, but less bad. My first video to really take off was my testing footage of Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster. I took a weekend trip to Northern California the weekend Railblazer opened, and I happened to see this terrible thing testing. Someone asked me to post the footage, so I did, and right off the bat, it got 11,000 views. A couple weeks later, I spent a weekend in Texas and shot my first vlog. Four parks in one day, and it was horrendous. Shaky footage. I forgot to film during some important parts during the day. But you live and you learn. Then I left on my epic three and a half week cross country road trip, investing over $3,000 into it. But that experience would be so important for the future of my channel. I vlogged the whole trip, focusing less on the actual parks and more on the trip itself. Gas prices, hotels, snacks, border crossings, stuff like that. And the vlogs weren't great, but people seemed to enjoy the journey. I had just bought a pair of iView camera glasses, so my idea was that I was going to get all my footage on ride, get no off-ride footage, and focus on getting pictures for Instagram. I really hate that I ignored off-ride footage. It wouldn't be until April 2019 that I started to film off-ride. But again, you live and you learn. I rounded out 2018 with a trip to Florida, my first time to Busch Gardens, first time at the Fun Spot Parks, and my first time riding Mako. That was a crazy year. I had been to Texas twice, Northern California, all across the country, and then Florida. My coaster count went from about 200 to almost 400. I was also playing around with different intros. Some of you may remember the countdown. Then I did an intro with You Get What You Give by The New Radicals, mixed in The Missing Frame by AFI, and using all that copyrighted music, I released my first top 50 list at the end of the year. On December 30th, I stumbled over to Magic Mountain like I normally do on the weekends, but this trip would be different. It was the last weekend of Holiday in the Park. The park was doing a Bring a Friend Free Day, and the line of cars to get into the park backed up for miles. I was on foot, so that was good, but I just went around filming the madness. I shot some reaction scenes at home and posted it, and before I knew it, it had over 30,000 views. Suddenly, monetization seemed very possible, so I picked out a new copyright-free intro. I chose Black Vulture from the YouTube Audio Library and never looked back. Fast forward to late March 2019. I was at Magic Mountain on another random weekend day, and while I was there, I saw a post that the park confirmed that Green Lantern was never going to reopen. I walked over to it and shot some footage to make a video about the world's worst coaster being closed forever, and that thing went gangbusters. I'm talking tens of thousands of views a day, going over 200,000 within two weeks, and that pushed me over the edge. I got the watch hours I needed, and I was officially making money on YouTube. The channel was growing, but it wasn't until May 7th, 2019 that it really took off. That's when I released my first mini documentary, this one called When Did Six Flags Become the Discount Chain? This ran through the history of the chain, from its origins, all its buyouts, its spending spree, its bankruptcy, its new strategy. This flew past 100,000 views and people seemed to love it. But it was also the first time I got a ton of new viewers who didn't already know me, and some of them were quite critical of my style. They had a right to be. This is the first time that I learned about a pop filter, and I bought one shortly after. I started the channel to do rankings, but I had done some coaster reviews, some vlogs, and now I realized that I could grow the channel with these mini docs and other business analysis videos. I did a video on Six Flags New England's Dark Knight Blunder in 2008, what the next Cedar Fair and Six Flags coasters would be, how Six Flags lost their minds at the turn of the century, and later that summer, how Cedar Fair picks its winners and losers. That was another video that really took off, and a few days later, I posted my top 20 worst coasters, and that became my most viewed video. That's where I learned, negativity sells. Anyway, the summer of 2019 is also when I changed the logo for the channel. 
I had to make it more legit so I could start selling merch. So it went from this to this. It was also the first time that I brought Sophie into the channel. She was only six years old and we shot a vlog at Adventure City in the OC Fair. And then less than a month later, one of my favorite videos, her first time on a looping coaster, Revolution at Magic Mountain. I also posted two of my most popular videos in the same week in September of 2019. The meme worthy vlog, is Six Flags America really that bad? That started with my argument with the GPS and that's become a channel favorite. GPS, take me to Six Flags America. Okay, taking you to Six Flags Great America. No, Six Flags America. Did you mean King's Dominion? No, take me to Six Flags America. Um, why? Why? What do you mean why? Just take me to Six Flags America. Okay, it's your funeral. Also, my next mini doc, how SeaWorld is redefining their image. It was around this time that I settled on my release schedule, putting out a smaller video on Monday and a bigger video on Thursday. And for the most part, I've kept that schedule ever since. I gained about 9,000 subs in less than six months, and I had my 10,000 sub Q&A on September 20th. It was around this time that I finally upgraded my microphone to a Blue Yeti, something I wish I'd started with. When people ask me about starting a channel, I always say, invest in a good microphone first. You don't want to look back at your videos down the line and just cringe at how bad the audio was. On October 21st, I started a whole mess when I stole Airtime Mic from El Toro Ryan, starting a few that's been on and off, but still lives on today. Right after that, I got to meet Ryan for the first time at Great Adventure, when I went out for the grand opening of American Dream. Those videos were on fire. Over 100,000 views for my opening day footage and my review of Shellraiser. Then, one of my most popular videos ever, how the accident on New Texas Giant caused a feud between Six Flags and Gerslauer. I closed out 2019 with another Magic Mountain at Capacity video. They really were stupid enough to make the same mistake as last year. Going happily into 2020, I posted another mini doc about Paramount Parks, another one about the fish hook coaster at the Stratosphere, and launching a brand new series. I had just done a video about the pros and cons of Lightning Rod, thinking it was a short ride going in, but realizing it was much longer than most of the other RMCs. I thought tracking prime ride time would make for a good video, and on March 5th, 2020, By the Numbers was born. I had thousands of dollars of flights booked for the 2020 season, and I had to cancel just about all of them. COVID shut everything down, but I had tons of content lined up, and with everyone locked down, my view counts were off the charts. There was a point where I was getting over 50,000 views a day, and I hit 30,000 subs on May 2nd. I also launched a new series that month, events that changed the theme park industry, starting with 2001. Those videos were, and still are, some of the most difficult to make, and the view counts kind of suck, but I love history, so I kept it going, and that series is probably going to end its run later this year. People keep asking me to do years in the 80s and 90s, but honestly, I don't know how to do this series outside of the internet era. I use message boards, and I use uh, other internet websites, so if you know any way that I can do this series without using these methods, then please let me know. I also started releasing a third video every week, talking about what was reopening and when. Over the summer, I also decided Corel was no longer a good enough editor for my videos, and I invested in Adobe Premiere Pro. It had a sharp learning curve, but I got used to it and I love it. 2020 was going to be the biggest year of travel for my channel, trying to reinvest some of the money that I was earning back into it, but I had to settle for two trips. The first one going to the grand reopening of Indiana Beach under new ownership, and the other going to Hollywood Nights for the first time, going to Keys of the Kingdom and joining some of the other big names on the panel, and making my way around to ride the new stuff, like Candemonium, Texas Stingray, and Orion. Right after I got back from that trip, we had a major life change. Moving away from Valencia, no longer being five minutes from Magic Mountain, and we packed up and moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, announcing this change in my review of my new home park, Frontier City. We officially moved in November, and right after I got this whole home office set up, I introduced a new series where I would take coaster quizzes on camera. I got this idea from Giraffeneck Mark, one of my go-to baseball YouTubers, and I thought it would be fun to do for coasters. I did this every weekend for a couple months, but I started to run out of good ideas, so I shelved it. As we got into 2021, I was finding the channel was starting to sag. It was pretty common for my videos to get 40,000 views in the first day or two, and that just wasn't happening anymore. I thought I needed something big to revitalize the channel, so I thought it would be interesting to do a complete history of Magic Mountain for its 50th anniversary. Nobody had ever done this before, nothing really in depth, so I looked around, found that newspapers.com had everything I needed in the form of primary sources to make this happen, and I got to work. This was an enormous project. It took months to get ready. And while I was questioning my life choices for putting this all together, my channel hit 50,000 subs on April 23rd, 2021. I did a couple special videos for this. A Q&A session, reading mean comments about me on Reddit, and a video about my favorite YouTubers and my inspirations. 
By early May, I was ready to release my first episode of my five-part documentary, thinking this was going to be huge for the channel. And I was horrified to find it was the least popular video I'd put out in a long time. I powered on to finish the documentary. People seemed to love it, but the work it took to make compared to the views it got was very discouraging. After the last episode dropped, I went to Florida for the grand opening of Velocicoaster and came back home in time for another big road trip. Two and a half weeks going from my new home in the center of the country, up to Minnesota, across to Ohio and New York, down the Jersey boardwalks and all the way to Georgia, coming back through the south to get home. I finally was able to visit parks that I had to skip before, like Adventureland, Valley Fair, the Mall of America, Michigan's Adventure, Great Escape, Coney Island, and I hit all those boardwalks in one day. This trip also allowed me to rank all the Cedar Fair parks and all the Six Flags parks in America, and I did that at the end of the year. I had two additions in 2021. First in September, Sophie got a little sister, Amy, and after nine years, you kind of forget how it is to have a baby in the house again. I also had been considering starting a baseball channel for some time, and in October, I finally launched Home Run Productions. That's grown a lot in about a year and a half, posting one video every week. It was also around October 2021 where I got what you might call the yips. For some reason, I was having the hardest time talking to the microphone. It was some kind of anxiety issue that made no sense, but it resulted in my voiceovers taking hours to do. And when I got the words out, I was talking way too fast. And this lasted about eight months into the summer of 2022. I don't know what caused it, and I hope it never comes back. After I posted my documentary, people were asking for the whole thing to be combined into one video. So on Christmas Day, I put it all together and released it, and it was the best suggestion ever. Apparently, YouTube loves to push long videos, and this had a slow start, but it caught the algorithm and it took off like crazy. In January 2023, it became my first video to pass 1 million views, and it still gets over 1,000 views a day. This encouraged me to start my next big documentary, The Complete History of Kings Island for its 50th Anniversary. In February 2022, I would launch a new series. Once again, thanks to Giraffe Neck Mark. This is Buy or Sell, taking predictions from viewers and buying or selling them. I've been putting one of these out every month ever since. 2022's travel schedule was just crazy. And for the first time, I would be doing this all not just with my brother, but with the whole family, Amy included. We went to Kings Island for his 50th birthday, something I needed to do to film for the documentary. I wanted to go to Lost Island's grand opening, but they moved it back a week, and that didn't work for me. But we still used that weekend to go to Minnesota and Iowa. We also went to California, and I went to the brand new Sesame Place. We went to Texas for Labor Day weekend, and then we had the big trip. Two and a half weeks to the East Coast and down to Walt Disney World, going to all four parks, and riding the big new coasters in the Southeast, like Pantheon, Iron Gwazi, and Icebreaker. These made for some really fun family vlogs, and people really seemed to enjoy them. I released the Kings Island documentary in May and June, and it did pretty bad as I expected, but the full documentary has over 130,000 views and is still going strong, so I can't complain about that. Late last year, I booked my first coaster trip overseas, joining the coaster crew on their trip to Scandinavia. This was not cheap, but I feel like I've maxed out what I can do in America, so to keep the channel going, I needed to branch out. So much of this channel is about my experiences and I have to keep that fresh, so it's exciting to leave the country, but also kind of frightening. So that brings us to right now, April 2023, five years from the start, and the channel keeps on keeping on. The first Monday of every month, I put out a buy the numbers video. The first Thursday of the month is buy or sell. Every two months, I release events that change the industry. And the last Monday, every two months, I release a parody video where I rank and joke about coasters that have the same name. I'm gonna release my new documentary about Asteroid starting in early May. On Thanksgiving Day, like always, that's where I release all my predictions for the coaster world. And December is all the classic hits for the year that was 2023. In the middle of all of that, lots of random ranking videos. Also, reviews and vlogs from my trips this year. And as always, I am happy to take video ideas. Some of my best videos came from your ideas in the comments. So that's all for this video. It went on a lot longer than I thought, but I hope it was interesting to at least get a behind the scenes look at what I do here over the last five years. So thank you all for all your support for all this time. And I hope I can keep your support for as long as I keep doing this. And as always, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.